Hey, good morning, Dr. Hernandez. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning. Hi, Janta. Where's your daughter? I miss seeing her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she actually caught another ear infection in the other ear. It was something. What? Yeah, it was strange. Uh -uh. So they had to give oh, her a no. different dose of antibiotics. Antibiotics, yeah. Yeah, so first I think they gave her amoxicillin, and the next time they yeah. gave her like a different kind, it was just hideous. Because her temperature mm -hmm. kept on spiking while she was sleeping, so it was just real scary. Oh, yeah, no, that's not good. Not yeah. good. Well, it's child care, you know. I mean, for all of my children, every time I put them in uh, daycare, they uh -huh. always catch colds. That's crazy. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like, yeah. And then it always happens about like, 1 30 or 2 in the morning where i just wake up and grab some water or something and like touch her head and be like what's going on <laughs> <laughs> exactly do you have form um jante so it's just a matter of just waiting until 10 30 and um we're missing two members but you do have uh quorum okay thank you so much nicole mm -hmm. I had to widen my screen there. I didn't see everyone. I only saw me on Dr. <laughs> Good morning to everyone. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> We're just over here chatting it up. <laughs> yeah, I only saw us three. <laughs> Went the full view. <laughs> Okay, so it's 1030 um, and we can definitely get started. I think Nicole have already let us know that we have quorum here. So we'll start with uh, welcoming everyone to the Friday, July 16, 2021 policy and budget subcommittee meeting. Uh, we'll start with any, uh, we'll start with introductions. I see on here we have a few um, individuals that are not on the uh, policy and budget. So if you want to just introduce yourself, your organization, if possible, uh, then we'll do a cab introduction. Um, Hi. Go ahead, Lynette. Lynette Williams, Stand Together Contra Costa. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Dale Harrington, um, interested uh, in becoming a CAB, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a CAB member. Hi there, Jill Ray with the Office of Supervisor Candace Anderson. Uh, 
with everyone from the community. John, say that everyone else is left is the members. Okay, thank you so much for that, Nicole. Um, my name is Jonte, uh, policy and bu budget uh, cap member. Good morning, Hi. Ozzy Carter, policy and budget committee. Dr. Michelle Hernandez, policy and budget committee. Myself from uh, Nicole Popcheck from Office of Reentry and Justice. And I see Patrice is on as well. Does she like to introduce herself? Hi, all. Patrice Guillory, Office of Reentry and Justice. Uh, Crawford Carpenter. I'm not on the committee, but I am a CAB member. Good morning to all once again. Okay, next we'll go on to any public comment under any item of the jurisdiction of the Community Advisory Board that's not placed on this agenda. I did have one announcement before we get to that. Go ahead, Nicole. I just wanted to um, put out there some of the cab members might have saw this morning that we, uh, Aura J had put a kind of placeholder on the calendar for your ad hoc planning meeting uh, next Friday. Um, I'll be following up with you individually, but it'd be great to get an RSVP just so we make sure we have quorum for that. Um, I will not be here uh, for the next two weeks. Um, so I'll put Patrice on that, CC her. But just want to kind of get a, a sense of who's going to be able to be there and uh, more to, more to come on that thank you for that nicole and that's actually the meeting that uh that michael posed during the full cab board meeting right it's just sort yeah. of like okay great 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 yeah i seen that actually this morning uh, rsvp and, for uh, one one to three p.m is the time that we're right the slot that we're looking for okay Thank you for that, Nicole. Uh, do we have any uh, other public comment? Uh, Jonte, I have another announcement. Um, the um, uh, so Office of Range and Justice sent out an invitation um, on behalf of the CAO's office and the um, Board of Supervisors. They will be hosting um, their second, I believe it's their second Truth Act um, Community Forum, which will take place on July 27th at 9 a.m. Um, we can, I'm not sure if the CAP members were on that list, Nicole, that yeah, I received. They were. Okay, they were. Okay, great. So hopefully you all have received um, that email alert. Um, there are a couple of uh, flyers attached to it. And um, so um, there are details on how you can join um, virtually and submit a public comment. The Truth Act Community Forum um, is a, a community forum required to be held uh, by our county board of supervisors. Um, to allow for our sheriff's department to um, report on their activities involving um, um, enforcement around civil uh, immigration um, cases in the county. Just to clarify that, Patrice, it's not the Board of Supervisors requirement, it's the state of California. I misspoke. State of California requires what city councils and, and board of supervisors to host those community forums. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that, Patrice. Sounds very interesting. I also received that email as well. I just checked, so very excited about that one as well. Um, any other public comment? Certainly any other item that's not mentioned on the agenda today? Okay, so with that, we'll move forward to approve the minutes from June 25th. We hosted a special meeting um, for the policy and uh, budget subcommittee. Hopefully for anyone that did not have the chance to attend, I'll give a few minutes for you to review um, the minutes from that meeting. It's attachment one, page four through six.
I would like um, to, to make a motion for the approval of the minutes from our special meeting of June the 25th. Okay, thank you for that. I Aussie second. Board. I we second. Have, we have Dr. Hernandez seconding. Mm -hmm. There's no public comment. I can make roll call, roll, a vote roll call. Aye. Dante. Aye. Dr. Hernandez. Aye. Dr. Cole. Parents, I don't know if you're able to unmute yourself or put your vote in chat. Hi, can you, can you hear me now? Yes, oh, thank that. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, motion passes. Okay, thank you so much for that, Nicole. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, we have something very exciting about to happen. We have Dr. Hernandez and Ozzy going to give a presentation that's geared towards our goal four and our work plan surrounding racial and gender disparities in the crystal criminal justice system, excuse me. So at this time, I'd like to turn the floor over to uh, Dr. Hernandez and Ozzy. Morning, all. I'm Ozzy Carter, and I will be um, doing the introduction portion of this presentation. First of all, I would like to say that um, from my personal experience as a formerly incarcerated African-American woman, um, this has been extremely valuable for me and also as a scholar. Um, research has been a portion of my curriculum and specifically looking at disparities, uh, looking at uh, my first uh, formal research project as a junior in academia was to research the disparities between the male and female um, prisoners in the carceral system of California, specifically uh, my area, our area, the Bay Area. And the things that I gleaned from that made me more thirsty for more research and coming on board with policy and budget and actually working with Dr. Hernandez kind of enhanced that passion that I have to better serve the populations that I represent. And I represent a lot of the populations of the disparities that we've been researching. And first thing that I really had to do as the new kid on the block, um, this being my first um, formal board service, being a member of CAB and with this subcommittee, I had to do a little research homework to catch up. And I first had to go back and um, get an overview of what Proposition 47 really said and AB 109. So I know for a lot of you, this is going to be repetitious, but uh, this was part of the research project for myself to familiarize myself so that I could better understand. And I, I had an understanding, but as with all things, I keep it simple and I start at the beginning. So I'm gonna take you through that uh, very minimal, so bear with me. Proposition 47 was passed by the voters in November of 2014. And what Proposition 47 did, it brought broad and significant changes to the California's criminal justice system. What it did also, it reduced penalties for certain lower drug, lower level drug and property offenses and represented a future, future step in prioritizing prison and jail space for higher level offenders. So then I'm gonna move on to Assembly Bill 109, what we know as AB 109, which we are charged with overseeing the funding. It's also known as realignment. And on April 4th of 2011, The Public Safety Realignment Act, AB 109, was signed into law by Governor Jerry Brown. 
and the policy changes in the act focus on alleviating overcrowding in the California state prison and reducing the state corrections budget. And this was highly achieved largely through transferring responsibility for incarceration and supervision of many low level inmates and parolees from the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation to the county level. And AB 109 went into effect October 1st of 2011. Now through my research, and we always have to be very careful when researching, making sure that we're getting information from reliable sources. And one of the things that I found interesting from one of the prior researchers was the fact that realignment AB 109 was enacted against the backdrop of a severely overcrowded California state prison system which strained health care and social services for inmates. But the statute says it was enacted to combat recidivism and not because of overcrowded prison populations. So we might want to put a star by that. And if anyone later on can add anything to that, I would appreciate it. So starting my research, you know, it, for me, it's imperative not to reinvent the wheel when looking for disparities. So my research led me to the Board of Supervisors formation of a task force. And that task force was a 17 member racial justice task force with membership coming from law enforcement, the courts, school district and community groups. And the mandate of the task force is as follows. It was to research and identify consensus measures within the county to reduce racial disparities in the criminal justice system. It was to plan and oversee implementation of the measures once identified and report back to the Board of Supervisors on progress made toward reducing racial disparities within the criminal justice system. So wow, for me, that was amazing. And it was championed by our district attorney. So what happened was on July 24th of 2018, the Racial Justice Task Force presented its final report and recommendations to the County Board of Supervisors. And the County Board of Supervisors considered the final recommendations striking out number 18 and number 19. And so in September 18th of 2018, the recruitment process began for seven members from the community to serve a two year term on the racial justice oversight body, RJ, OB. And February 6th of 2020, the Racial Justice and Oversight Body established three committees, the Community Engagement and Funding Subcommittee, the Data Subcommittee, and the Community Engagement and Funding Subcommittee. I'm sorry, the Community Engagement and Funding Subcommittee, the Data Subcommittee, and the Diversion Subcommittee. So, what that meant for me was that I needed to go to these meetings to find out where this data was that we're looking for and how this data is categorized. And I went to the last meeting on June the 24th and I got some great information. Um, the board members are in the process of presenting a may at a mayor's conference. And to date, the date has not been really set. I understood it was on hold for August, but it could have to move into maybe September. But the point that I'm trying to make is simply, we have a task force, we have the RJOB who is actually trying to secure the data, holding listening sessions, inviting the community, and then taking and trying to move forward out of 
into the community to be able to gather more data and make it available and accessible. Because as we know, the data is in different places and different organizations have places that they place this data. So the primary goal of the RJOB is to make this data available and viewable. Because you know, there's activists, there's attorneys, there's journalists, scholars and researchers who want this data and want to pull out the disparities and see what the disparities are. So enough from me. We're going to now focus on what some of these disparities are and how they're showing up within Contra Costa County. So Dr. Hernandez will take it from here. Just let me know if you want me to go to the next page as well. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, um, Ozzy, for that great introduction. I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the things that um, the Board of Supervisor wants and how we can kind of uh, advance that to our policy. Because I think if you look at the statistics, and Nicole, you can um, share the screen, I'm not sure. So just to refresh a little bit, the United States criminal justice system, it's the largest in the world. And at the end of 2015, there was over 6.7 million individuals who were in some form of incarceration. And we are, the United States is the world leader in the rate of incarceration compared to every other nation. And that is huge. And even though most of the statistics focus on gender and race, I think it's really important that we, especially because of the pandemic and the times right now, we need to open up and analyze in detail what all of these people that are coming into the system have so we can best um, help their recovery. And in looking at the Board of Supervisors uh, outlines, they do, like Ozzy said, want to establish an Uber committee um, process that allows for shared leadership and responsibility, which I think CAB is, you know, excellent. And, and the other thing I really do agree with uh, Federal Glover and, and um, Karen Mitchoff is they are really interested in ensuring that data collection and analysts of policy making is mainstreamed. So one platform sharing data across county agencies. And this is critical. And I'm trying not to sound like a dork stat, uh, stats person. But when proving and getting funding, you have to have empirical evidence-based statistics, meaning the government has the money that they're willing to give us. But if we don't look at before the intervention, during the intervention, and after to really look at our success rate in the county, we're not going to be able to get more funding. And Contra Costa, I consult with a lot of counties. I was just talking to somebody in uh, San Joaquin County yesterday, and they do things differently. And I, I'm always the person that hears the complaints about the county because I'm a psychologist, so I hear about bad things in the criminal justice system. But I do have a call out to them, and I have reached out to Family Justice Center, who has actually gotten a grant to do some trauma-informed um, work in the system. And I'm going to collaborate with them because their research is from UCSF. And I've been trained by the government, the Veterans Administration, in trauma. So I'm going to compare those. But the, basically, the point I'm trying to say is that we need to look at other things like empowered aging, seniors, um, disabilities, whether they're a parent or not. And I'm probably the first one to let you know that when I was younger, it was like, if I said, oh, I'm disabled, people would say, well, what's your disability? Fast forward, it's 2021. 
if I say, oh, I have a disability, it seems like everybody says, oh, me too. Me too, I'm disabled, you're disabled. But nobody's defining under that umbrella what disability. So in the criminal justice system, if we need to look at disabilities, I have clients in prison that are deaf, that the way they accommodate it is by putting an orange vest on them, but they're targets because they're deaf. That's not an accommodation and that's not making them feel safer or if they're blind or if they're in a wheelchair. So uh, these are the things that we should really think about, whether it's a physical disability, whether it's a developmental or psychiatric. And nowadays, as you guys can see on the news, it can be a combination of more than one. And we have to not just diagnose these individuals, but we have to give a prognosis. If they're upset when you call 911 and this family had to leave Contra Costa County and, and go to San Joaquin, if they know the police are coming and they don't understand a, a disability, whether it's developmental, whether it's psychiatric, it's how can you, how can you safely detain that individual? So those are things I think that we need to talk about and especially in the intellectual and developmental disabled population, they, are, they can be very violent when they're overstimulated and or if they don't have their medication. Dr. Hernandez, I think we lost your audio. Oh. Okay, can you hear me now or no? Yeah. Okay. Um, so where did I leave off? Where did you guys? Did you, what's the last thing I said that you heard? Anything? I believe you were speaking about uh, disabilities, whether visual or, you know, individuals just uh, really identifying exactly what they are. At least that's the last thing I heard. And also stimulation of behaviors. You're going back out, Dr. Hernandez. Yeah, it looks like we lost you again. Okay, I'm just going to pick up, um, kind of uh, fill in until Dr. Hernandez uh, gets back in. You can just okay. let me know, Dr. Hernandez. I know. Okay, so one of the things that we really wanted to bring clarity to was language and the clarity of using specific verbiage. Um, a lot of the verbiage that has been is being used is um, it's been obsolete. And what, what we're looking at is formulating this correct verbiage um, so that we can be able to gather the information of the various disparities and how that's going to look. Because currently, it, looking at the data, you're only looking at race and gender primarily across the platforms of the information that I'm getting. And that seems to be standard. And we all know that the this disparities are race and gender. That's a common denominator. But what we're looking at as Dr. Hernandez is saying, yeah. have other disparities. Mm -hmm. Your disabilities. Are you back on Dr. Hernandez? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you guys yeah, hear me Yeah, I can now? hear you now. You wanna go ahead? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so I, I mean, thank you, Ozzy, for picking up on that. Um, it's just really important because I see it so much uh, in this population and police officers, they're not, they don't, they don't, they're not trained in this. I mean, it's, it takes applied behavior analysts to deal with these type of individuals and they're really, they're, they're violent and they don't, they're not aware of that. So that's why I feel like it's, you know, they're either conserved, they're in group homes, they come, you know, into a forensic environment 
they're on parole, but yet nobody's really watching them and it's not safe. But I think that's something that we have to look at because that's what's going to give us the numbers to really, really, really narrow down how we can help, you know, all of these people that are entering the criminal justice system. And then, of course, the identification. Some people don't consider themselves disabled, even if they are. And I didn't realize that until I did my research to get my doctorate. So people would tell me, oh, well, I'm not like you, Dr. Hernandez. Uh, I just have cancer. I'm not disabled. Okay, well, that's their reality. They're not going to check that mark, you know, that box on the intake that says they're disabled. So how do we deal with that, too? So we have to put in something in there, like how do they identify and let them fill it out because we can't pigeonhole them into something. And same thing with gender. You know, it's, you have to say, just because they say they're male doesn't mean they feel like that they identify as that gender. And the third thing the Board of Supervisors wanted, which I, I really think is good, is, is the diversion strategy and the 24-hour crisis stabilization, which is essential because there's so many people that apply for victim of crime services, myself included, that uh, you don't get help for months. And by that time, and people give up and then they act out, <laughs> don't take their medicine, become violent, end up back in, you know, committing a crime in, in the system. So how do we stop that revolving door? That's costing us a lot of money. And I think collectively, and I'm so thankful for this opportunity, because this is just planting seeds of some really, really good stuff that we can do in our county, which, you know, which is a lot better than other counties. And the restorative justice piece, I wanted to let you guys know, there, if you go on Facebook, there's a Compassionate Prison Project. Uh, I, you can go in and listen on some of these restorative justice circles, and they actually do have some really good trauma research based in it, evidence, and it's, you know, it impressed me, which, which is hard to do. So if you guys want to take a look at that, um, I think that's something we can bring back in next month and talk about because it's really interesting, something that maybe we can incorporate. But thank you guys for this opportunity and I hope I hope that made sense. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll be more than happy to share. And thanks, Ozzy, you did a great job. Thank you both. It was an excellent presentation. So much to take in. Um, Thank you both. I will open the floor for open discussions. Anyone have any feedback, any questions for Dr. Hernandez or Ozzy? Thank you both for sharing the information. Uh, very pertinent, pertinent to what's happen, happening today. Uh, and then to begin to look outside the box of the, the current things that's consistently happening and nothing's changing. You know, so I appreciate the identifying of the mental health component, the behavior component, that these are disparities. And some of these lead to inequities, you know, that we miss in return. So definitely appreciate that from both of you. So there's one other thing that we would like to add, and that is that we would definitely would like to make this a call to action to our larger cap body to help us, assist us in articulating uh, a definition and categories that can be possibly included. Uh, and whether or not uh, myself or Dr. Hernandez will be taking on the advocacy at these various um, 
mayor's conferences, at these various board meetings, these uh, community listening sessions of what it is we want to see. And I think that this is a call to action if for myself and Dr. Hernandez, but also to CAB to assist us in developing the articulation of what it is that we would like to see across the board with our CBOs and also our justice, those who are in within the justice system. The agencies within the justice system. You know, one question that I have for you is on this conclusion slide, it, it, you said using rich data linking federal cases for arrests through sentencing. Did, did you mean that we don't do the federal cases, right? I mean, we have state and county cases in our, sorry, detention system, uh, not federal cases. Those go a different place. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the research was just saying that they wanted, you know, the cities and states to kind of be under that umbrella. But yeah, you guys know exactly what that that is. But that's why I added it. Okay, if we don't have any more other questions or feedback, we can definitely move on to agenda number five. That's attachment three, pages 11 and 12. And we will discuss the timing and strategy for fiscal year 2022-2023 budget request from our CBOs. And when looking at this, it sort of seems that our back is against the wall as far as the timing go. Um, I think we're, you know, right at where we're supposed to be at um, with um, definitely everything that have taken place today, the great um, input and ideas from Dr. Hernandez and Ozzy, um, along with um, us also just discussing, I know last special meeting, we discussed exactly how we would want those budget requests sent to us, considering that we would not be doing um, just sort of uh, formal presentations from each CBO, but just rather them identifying exactly their budget requests, um, any modifications and giving a quick um, explanation to ORJ as far as any um, underages they would have and us identifying um, some of the things that obviously Patrice um, spoke about, not in the direct, the same verbiage that she used, but if there was underages, if there was a possibility of them bringing on someone that can assist us um, or even in the same category of Dr. Hernandez's and um, Ozzy's presentation, someone that can go out um, and, you know, collect this data for our AB 109 population to see how that fits into obtaining a new worker that can help us with some of the uh, trend, uh, disparities that they've been obviously enduring. Um, so we have 716, which we obviously, you know, taken care of today. I don't see anything other than discussing the talking points with that one. So that one's really in the um, completed category. Um, and the rest of them, I think that we would obviously are waiting on more information um, back from um, other stakeholders for us to really place a completed uh, check mark next to these ones. Um, but we'll just take a quick second to just basically review um, at the top of attachment three some of the deadlines that uh, we're um, set to make um, and get yeah, any I feedback. Just, just come provide some background. So the first uh, timeline is just a suggestion based on what I'm seeing has been done in the past with CAB as far as timing, but also taking into consideration um, just what meetings we have left. And then on toward the below, uh, the last timing is basically taking the CCC budget from last year with the only dates we know for sure are when the budget workshop is and when the, the CCP meetings will be. Um, and these are all just, everything else is just tentative based on what the anticipation is. Um, trying to take a conservative approach for getting ahead of things. So, um, but yeah, 
this first one is, is a suggestion from ORJ, but open to feedback. Well, I personally feel that the tentative schedule, you know, proposed from ORJ that we will be able to make um, these deadlines. I don't see anything that can really hinder us or prevent us from it, uh, minus any delayed information that we may receive from, you know, um, other stakeholders. But other than that, I don't see, you know, anything that may delay us. Dr. Hernandez, Ozzie, Terrence. So am I understanding correctly from Nicole, these are just, uh, they're not really etched in stone, but kind of like tentative, so. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest call out here and in, in why this was created to help facilitate the conversation about when we wanted to bring in um, CBOs to provide dialogue on their budget request and looking at the timing that we have left, our recommendation is to focus on next month, August, bringing them in. And then if some need to trickle into September, we have time, but um, that's really what this is to help facilitate um, from this meeting specifically, but also to get you guys thinking about just the, the, the time that we have left. Um, so if I could jump in here too. Um, so the these are already your established meeting um, dates, right? So this is your meeting schedule for the rest of this year. Um, and um, in the column of major activity, these are some suggested agenda items for that meeting time. So that way you're able to stay on track um, with regards to the CCP budget schedule and how that's happening. So um, we have here for your next, the next two meetings, so your meeting in August and in September are opportunities where CBOs can come and make their um, requests um, or present whether it presents or submit something in writing to you guys, where you can have some time to deliberate and begin thinking about developing your budget proposal. Um, and then for your October meeting would be an actual review of um, your budget proposal and narrative, um, an initial draft um, to discuss. And then um, in November, November um, any final edits that may need to be made this November date will be after um, the CCP has its um, budget workshop. So after hearing discussions from um, CCP at that time, you can factor that into your final requests or your, your final edits, so to speak, to then submit for the December CCP meeting where they will um, uh, uh, um, have a final vote uh, on, on budget requests and moving forward to PPC. So that's sort of how this, how we're working through the timeline. So that way you're not having to worry about having any additional special meetings. Now, if you do want more time and you want um, uh, additional meetings in between your monthly meetings, we can certainly help to accommodate that um, as we go through this process and you're getting requests and you feel like you still need more time to talk things through, develop, um, uh, uh, develop your recommendations, things like that, that can be factored in, but this is your, this is your existing meeting schedule. So just wanted to make sure that that was clear. And then in the next bucket, if you can scroll down just a little bit more, um, Nicole, for the upcoming CAB meetings, we are plugging in, um, these are, this is the existing uh, meeting schedule for the other subcommittee, subcommittees as well as programs in, as well as um, the full CAB body. And I know that there was some conversation at some point 
to ensure that the other subcommittees had an opportunity to uh, give their feedback on what the budget uh, proposal um, should be or what it should include. So these are also opportunities here where if there's a draft created, it could be shared, or we invite different subcommittees to attend the policy and budget subcommittee meetings where these requests may be made or you know things of that nature. So there's some flexibility in time and timing um, where information can be shared and information can be collected. So toward toward the end of um, creating a final budget proposal. I'm sorry, I said budget proposal, feedback on budget proposal from the subcommittees. It's actually the talking points. Talking points, yeah. If I have here the general meeting, it will typically approve the talking points um, before folks go out and do their ambassador uh, assignments. And that would be uh, the beginning of September mm -hmm. right here. So I put it on your guys' calendar for next time around. So basically all the subcommittees have a, a one-time conversation um, within the August scheduling to talk about talking points. So does anyone have any questions about um, the timeline or process or anything like that? I know it can look like a lot of information, but just want to be clear, it's your existing um, meeting schedule. So there's nothing out, totally out of the ordinary. It's just a matter of when do you want to have certain conversations? When do you need information for you know deadlines that are coming down the pipe? No, I really think that for, for my part that that helped explain things a, a lot more. Um, thank you so much for that, Patrice. I, I don't personally have any questions right now. Anyone else? Thank you, Patrice. That did clarify for me. Thank you so much. Yes, it really did. Um, so quick question, Nicole. On here, I see vote by this. I don't see what we would be voting on. Are we just voting on the tentative um, schedule? Well this was to help facilitate the conversation about how we wanted to bring the um, CBOs to um, talk about their budget requests. The last time we were talking about just the strategy of like a survey versus them just coming to this meeting, ORJ's recommendation was there wasn't a need for a survey, just right. we'll send out an email inviting them to come to the August um, subcommittee meeting on the 20th. And if they had materials to present, then they would get that to us in time for us to put it in the agenda packet. But otherwise, they would just show up and attend. And we, we would uh, dedicate time to, for them to um, present um, any requests that they have at that time. OK, and for any additional questions that we may have for them, or will we, will we be uh, sort of composing them beforehand and sending them to them, or just winging it? Um. I haven't been a part of these uh, CBO budget request meetings. I don't know, uh, Patrice, if you can provide some background um, on how, it's my understanding that they would be voted on in that meeting if the, the CAB was to advocate for whatever request it was. Oh, really? Uh, so no, so if they come before, come before, let's say they come to the next uh, meeting, August 20th, we, prior to August 20th, we will send out, ORJ will send out an email to the, to the providers, letting them know that you guys are hosting a meeting. You want to hear from CBOs. You're preparing for your budget. You want to hear from them um, with any um, proposed recommendations that they may have, um, things of that nature. So you invite them to attend. They can either submit in writing um, their um, proposed recommendation, or they can present to you um, during that meeting. And so during the meeting, after you hear their presentation, you certainly can ask whatever questions you like. You do not have to, at that particular moment, um, uh, a vote on their recommendation because you're hearing it for the, for the first time. So you will need some time to sort of deliberate on that. That's why you do have at least two meetings, um, at least scheduled for 
um, or in your existing scheduled meetings, you have two, there are two opportunities for folks to come and present. Um, and then your October 15th meeting um, is where, uh, you know, you, well, we'll put a draft together, but um, actually you might, act, you may need a meeting in between time to really think, say, you know, we've heard all of this from these various providers. This, these were all the recommendations. How do we feel? How do we want to move forward? And then have a draft be presented to you. So we can figure out um, within our existing time schedule how to make that happen. Um, we may even allow for your, your September meeting to be the meeting to discuss that and give opportunity for CBOs to show up at um, a general cab meeting. That's an opportunity too um, that we've done in the past. So instead of reserving two, um, two policy and budget meetings specifically, just specifically on CBO requests, we can have one for CBO requests and then one general body for CBO requests, allowing your September meeting um, to be the meeting where you kind of deliberate on all the requests that you've received so far. That's an yeah, opportunity. Yeah, so the September 9th meeting could help support that. I could see that. Mm -hmm. um, 820, the August policy and budget subcommittee meeting being the, the initial meeting where CBOs come to present requests and then the general meeting on uh, September 9th. Um, I guess a follow up to that. Would that would that be enough time? I'm pretty sure on that day it says we're supposed to be approving talking points. I wouldn't want to. Well, that's one. Me. That's one particular agenda item that I know that we'll probably have to do, but we have room for other agenda items. Okay, and we wouldn't yeah. want to check with Michael first, no. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll circle back with Michael. All right. Yeah. Well, me personally, I, I just feel like I like to let things sort of soak in and absorb it before making any decisions. I really like Patrice idea as far as having a meeting in between after we get the two um, the CBOs that come and present and review the information that we have written as far as the budget requests. Um, I'm not too sure how other CAB members, uh, you know, feel, but that would be obviously my vote um, towards the direction that we should head in. I, I, Go ahead, Terrence. I, I, I can care with that. I just want to ask Patrice, was that filler put in there because possibly some of the CBOs maybe have, you know, had some hiccups with information, they need to resubmit or, wow. you know, speak again at the second presentation. Is that filler also add that in to that as well? No, just in, in past history, uh, not all um, providers were able to make to that make it to that one scheduled meeting. So it's, mm -hmm. it's just basically giving folks an opportunity. If they can't make it to the first one, they always there's a second one that they can make it to. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Ozzy, Dr. Hernandez, any feedback? All right. So I think at this time we're on board to um, for 820 and just sort of having that filler uh, meeting in there for us to just come back. Uh, to the round table and you know just sort of discuss any other um, blanks inside of any information that we may have um, before finalizing obviously um, our recommendations and presenting it to the full board um, then at that time I believe we're going to obviously make those recommendations um, to the full board and also allow for their input does that sound about correct yes so I think the so last when thing, I hear you say a filler, are you saying add in an additional special meeting? Most definitely. I like that okay. idea. I think it's good to get the information and sort of sit back and read back through it. And if we need any other additional CBOs to come in and elaborate on any information, then they can come into the full board to help us with that decision. Okay, so can we talk about um, timeline right now? If sure. we the only concern uh, with that is 820 is pretty close to the 99 nine, nine, right. general meeting. If you wanted to have a meeting before that general meeting of September, you don't give yourself much time to do that. Um, so I think we can actually. Was the filler after you had the two, after you had the two meetings 
That's what I was um, yeah. That was my, that, at least that's what I'm hearing. I, don't, I, or I could be hearing that wrong. Then well, after 9-9, it's 917, which is pretty soon after the 9-9. I think it's the next week. Oh, I see. Because you would ultimately have two meetings on the same week. All right. My understanding was that, and correct if I'm wrong, is that we would take 820 as the first opportunity for CBOs to come, and then also give them the opportunity at the general meeting at on 99. Yeah. Without a special meeting for policy and budget, and then them on 917 policy and budget September meeting them having a final vote into what recommendations was at that meeting you'd be talking about not your drafting a vote. Your not a vote. <laughs> we well, don't not have vote. to vote. I mean Michael did he, he told me that they did vote, but you don't have to, but um yeah. It'll yeah. it'll be more discussion of requests that have come forward in the direction of where you want to go for your first draft of the proposal. Did they not vote on the actual draft of the proposal? Did they not no, vote you vote on the draft when you're ready to to finalize it. Right. Okay. Up to that point, it's just all still iteration. So there's no need to continue to to vote on every on every draft because it's, so ORJ will be putting the draft together for you, and you're giving us feedback, and then we we bring it back to the to the um, to the body during the meeting where you actually want to vote to approve to move it forward to the full body cap for them to do a, a final vote that yes we want to put, put this into the ccp package got you okay i think that the best way uh, to do it is just the way that uh, nicole just laid it out is 820 we'll gather the information 99 will you know have any other you know clarification that's needed with the full board the discussion there uh, contingent upon mike uh having time if he hasn't already arranged something and then us coming back at 917 for final discussions uh surrounding our uh, review of the draft that orj will compose for us to bring back to the full board for the vote correct so uh, i'll clarify your um overview 820 will be your initial um, hearing from CBOs on their budget request. 99 will be the general tab meeting where we will be another round of hearing of requests from CBOs. 917 will be your discussion of all the requests you've received so far to begin the drafting of your recommendations for um, the budget proposal. Then by um, not then by 10 15 we can bring you bring you a draft um, that you can then decide to to vote review decide to vote on to move forward to um a cap full body meeting correct very well put Is so that... we can make some adjustments to this mm -hmm. um timeline and um edit it so that way that is um that flow is explicitly clear and also with that in mind, will the CBOs be given notice that they'll have two attempts? Yes. So my office will send the email out to all the providers um, requesting their attendance um, to the two meetings. Um, it, you know, whichever one they decide is most convenient for them. Um, and also uh, give them the opportunity to, to submit something in writing. Got I it. just wanted to highlight, I don't, I don't mean to add more confusion, but the 1014 general meeting will be the last opportunity for the full body to weigh in for what's being submitted to the CCP workshop on November 5th. Oh. So my intent for 1015 was to, well, yeah, that would be the first, 1014 would be the first opportunity for the full body to see your draft and then 1015, which is the next day, is your your final meeting to quickly put some input together that came out of the, the full cab on 1014. And then that would go off to CCP. Gotcha. Right. I 
I think to make it as easy as possible, the, 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 the key for 917 for us to get direction from you guys of what is your, what's going to be your budget uh, recommendations after you've heard from everybody. From there, we could put the ORJ will put the, the draft together. We could put it in the in the full body caps uh, agenda um, for for review. So you all will still have a chance to, to see it. And then if from the conversation there, if you feel that you know there's more edits that need to be made, there's more discussion that needs to be had, we'll certainly have it ready for that um, 10 15 meeting. How does that sound for folks? I'm definitely on board with that, Patrice. That sounds great to me. Terrence, Ozzy, Dr. Hernandez. Does that sound fine to everyone? Yes, I concur. Thank you for the clarity. So just so I understand, I want clarity on my end. We are not presenting this to the full body to weigh in on this before it goes to CCP. Correct. No, they, so there will be a draft on October 14th for the full body. Okay, so that will be presented. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And there's been, uh, uh, just to give some history, there have been instances where um, a, a budget proposal or a proposal, just in general, um, that we know is going to need to be put into the CCP packet. Um, where the, the general body has had an opportunity to review it and they give feedback or um, suggest certain corrections and then we'll vote that we will call a vote uh, where the motion is, you know, we, we move to approve this proposal with the stated corrections and then they would and then that will go into the record of action. So therefore, then the you wouldn't then know that the final draft that was completed included all of those um, corrections um, from the, the draft that was discussed during that meeting. So folks will feel pretty confident that it will still, whatever draft is being discussed, it will still move forward with all, everyone's edits and, and corrections, even if they haven't seen the final before it was actually developed, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh -huh. You know, I would just um, add into that, Patrice, um, perhaps a an overview of what the process is going to be at the next CAB meeting so that if any of the CAB members have an issue with that, that can be brought up well early into the, the timeline. Excellent point. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jill, for that suggestion. Excellent idea. All right, so Nicole, for this one, so at this point, we've already discussed it. I think we're all on board, um, especially we have some extra clarification that will be coming during our next uh, policy and budget subcommittee meeting. Um, we don't need to vote on this right now, or do we? No. Okay, great, great, great. That's what I thought. Okay, so we can go on to our last agenda item, I believe. Um, Attachment four is just discussing our, our, our talking points. I'm pretty sure all of us have gotten the email from Nicole um, in which we have um, gave our first and our second um, choice for who we will be meeting with um, to discuss our talking points. So we'll just take a second to get down to uh, page 13 through 15 to sort of just view the talking points. And if anyone hasn't uh, reviewed them already, we'll just give a quick second to go over them. Yeah, and I just to wanted to clarify the reason putting this on the agenda was if there was anything new that the CAB or this policy and budget wanted to present to the full body of a, another area of opportunity to um, 
present to your ambassadors that you're assigned to, I'm sorry, your uh, department heads and um, agency heads uh, when you go out on to, with your ambassador program, this is the document to make that change to. I believe these these four here were kind of what changed. Um, I have a comment. If you could scroll back, when you talked about we believe, I think there were four or five items. If you could scroll back just a little bit more, um, scroll. Um, yeah, we're okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There we go. These are um, these are pillars that are, have not changed. That they are not meant to change, at least not for the purpose of talking points. This well, is a, um, I understand that. Um, might we put maybe another comment saying our core values rest upon these pillars or something of that nature? Because aren't these the core values? Yeah, my, my understanding of this, that would be changing another document that exists. The point of the talking points is that this is one that just is a standard. If you want to change your policy statement pillars, that that would be a different conversation. But if okay, you're well, talking about language. Would that come up, yeah, but would that come up then in our committee for outreach and community engagement? I mean, should we, um, or like, should that be that like committee? like something for the full board. Yeah, yeah I, just, well, I just didn't want folks to get caught up on like language necessarily more on like topics that you want to um, advocate for, right? Because you're not going to read this verbatim to your assigned department head. Okay. This is more to help uh, as a guide for you to go out there and feel confident about the areas that we're advocating for, CAB's advocating for. Well, I believe so, our pillars, you will want to read verbatim exactly what, you know, what they are, not just try to come up or, you know, paraphrase your own. We want to stick to. No. But going back to what Crawford was saying, it was just this line of before that, right? It wasn't adding to the pillar, right, Crawford? Oh, but... right, 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 right. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like well, a gram grammatical change. Okay. So if, if I think the outreach could focus, if they want a grammatical change to this document, the, the outreach, that would be the appropriate place for that. Okay, all right. A topic Thank change, you. that's what we're looking input for each subcommittee to, to provide input to. Well, be before we go there, Crawford, what, what was it that was um, coming to your mind about um, uh, to ensure that, that a statement around values um, would be would be included here. Well, I you know, I, um, my, my thought process was, um, yes, this is good. We say what we believe in. And um, I, I know it's a language approach, but language being, you know, this, these are our core values. I think that has a little more impact than, well, we want to invest in what works. We believe, we believe, we believe versus the strength of the statement, our core values. I mean, uh, uh, this is just me. And maybe uh, when it's my opportunity to present, I may just add in core values. <laughs> but I just thought it was more powerful. Um, not that this isn't good. Don't get me wrong. I think this is very good. But um, uh, maybe I'll bring that up in our subcommittee. I don't want to uh, detain your subcommittee here. I'll bring that up in our subcommittee and we'll see what happens. How's that? But but thank you for the input. Yeah, no, that sounds good. All right, so as far as the number four, Nicole, I believe you said those were the only ones that had changed for us. Well, Patrice can speak to this better, but I believe one and two are kind of always going to be there. One is our pillars, unless our pillars are changing, right? And that would be a different change process to change. 
that. Um, and number two, we're, we're always going to be looking for transparency and accountability for the funding. Um, unless there's something in within these bullets that would need to change. But it's my understanding with conversations with Michael that this would continue to exist. Um, and then three is about our office. And these are kind of in progress. We're expanding ORJ. Um, that's very unique, right? A unique goal. And then number four is where my understanding these bullets under CAB recommends the following are the ones that kind of change throughout each year. So yeah, let me give a little bit more context. Um, these were actually previous um, year talking points, right? Some of these are still relevant um, and some of these are not. Um, for example, even with the ORJ, though I'm always in favor of um, increasing capacity for ORJ, um, what's actually um, been uh, requested here is actually being filled, fulfilled. So um, yay, check that off the box, right? Um, and then uh, with regards to number two, increasing AB 109 budget transparency and accountability, um, some of these things you've actually have spoken to in your recommendations to CCP. Um, so some of those things are um, being worked on, right? But there may be elements um, that you still want to highlight specifically to the supervisors that you're going to be speaking with, um, as well as some of the department heads as well. So um, the important thing to know with utilizing these talking points is to first get a sense of what it is you really want to share with the with the leaders that you'll be meeting with, where some really key uh, a key um, uh, uh, um, issues that you really want to uplift to them that you feel that is really important um, that they hear coming from CAP. Some of the talking points from the previous year really built from a lot of the work that CAP has done in prior years. Um, but you are welcome to somewhat deviate from that if you so choose, if you feel like there are other issues that are of great concern um, or just uh, that you would like to prioritize and you would like to see the department heads and the supervisors also prioritize as well. That could be what has been discussed from prior years, or it could be something new. So um, that's what's before you to really think about and discuss what are some topic areas that you would like to that you would like to see these leaders begin to prioritize. So could I ask a question, Patrice? Mm -hmm. um, would this be a time to have a discussion around specific categories of disparities and what we would like to see um, brought to brought forward. And uh, I'm really happy about who I'm going to take a visit to. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure that uh, I could include that into um, my conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, especially if you're connecting this to, um, as you shared in your presentation, you're connecting this to the racial justice oversight body recommendations and the work that they're doing there, um, looking at disparities across the justice system. Um, I think um, you certainly will have um, leaders who will definitely um, will have their ears perked for that <laughs> because it because of their support of the work of our job to begin with. So um, I think that's that's a great nexus um, to be able to include. Um, some talking points around uh, language or some specific, I, what I'm gathering from what you and Dr. Hernandez were speaking to is some specific data points you, you want to see within the population, if, if, if I got that right. Okay. Yeah. Yes, correct. So Nicole and I are taking notes on um, what topics that you guys would like to see included. And I, I, I've got yours, Ozzy.
I, I think Patricia and, and Nicole that um, a large part of these recommendations, uh, we need to see, you know, what, you know, how are they going to be contended to, you know, moving forward, you know, because if these are recommendations now, and they hadn't been, you know, addressed, um, let's find out if they're going to be addressed and how they're going to be addressed moving forward as an action item. Uh, so I think it's very pertinent to, to, to see these things go from where they are into improving or if there continue to be challenges uh, to, you know, this population. So I think it's, you know, right now with those points uh, and also adding Ozzy and Dr. Hernandez points, uh, uh, for me, my supposition is, is more than enough uh, to see moving forward to make sure that these are addressed appropriately you know, down the line, even for the next group of CAP members. So just like you said in the past, there's been some things that have taken some time to just get adjusted and the challenges that have, have, have that has happened in the past to see improvement down the road. And you've been there in the past uh, and prior to see things move. So I think what was now um, for me uh, to see how things are gonna be addressed uh, and see how they are uh, addressed moving forward uh, in this process. Very nice. You know, um, to that point, Terrence, when you all are in your meetings with um, the various leaders, that's a great opportunity to, to um, you know, obviously you're sharing what you feel is um, should be prioritized, but then also get some feedback from them on what are the potential challenges um, to seeing this uh, work move forward. Um, they're, they're certainly going to share, I'm sure, um, their support of or opposition to maybe some of the things um, that you're presenting. Um, and, and they can very well share what the challenges that they foresee in moving some of this work forward. They may even ask uh, you all to provide even more information. Maybe it's there's some things that they hadn't even thought of just yet that you're presenting to them. Um, and they would appreciate your collaboration to provide more information to help them figure out where to steer um, their decision making. So it should be, again, we, we put these talking points together to help guide the conversation, but it, it, it should be a flowing conversation, right? Where you're sharing with them what you feel is should be prioritized and you're also getting feedback as to where they, um, what efforts they're able to make, what actions that they are willing um, to take, whether it's within their respective departments or even with the supervisor specifically, um, where their position um, lies among um, the um, the points that you're raising to them, and then um, you know where they foresee in the future for some of these actions to to be implemented. So it should be a free flowing, somewhat conversation where it's it's a learning opportunity for both sides. Excellent. And that's good to know because uh, this is more of a, a dialogue bill, correct? To identify these key indicators uh, that we're recommending. Uh, yes. So, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Both a dialogue and then, you know, but if there are some specific points where you would like their support to take lead on or anything of that nature, you're, you're, you're welcome to share that. Um, you're giving recommendations, you're sharing what you feel as a, a, um, as a member of CAB, what should be prioritized, and then allow them to, to give feedback on that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Nicole, just so I'm correct, as far as item six, that's also not a voting item, correct? Yeah, I just put that on there in case you guys choose to make some type of call to action or motion. Right. That's just more from a Brown Act standpoint. So, but yes, you don't gotcha. have to vote on this. Okay, gotcha. Thank you for that. Um, and Patrice, you may have already answered this, but in regards to these key indicators, what was the follow-up? What was the follow-through to, to just kind of 
you know, fine line things in reference to, you know, after the fact and in, in, in getting information from the actions that have, have been taken. I can't recall from the last year um, when these talking points were used, uh, what happened as a follow up. I will say that when CAB, separate from the talking points, when CAB um, presented their um, policy recommendations that uh, went up to, was it um, PPC, that's where it was um, those leaders, which is which are two supervisors, right? Um, they're, they're essentially their subcommittee on all things public uh, protection related. Um, they recommended um, or rather directed CCP to agendize your recommendations. So that's an example of, I'm so sorry, that's an example of what, um, one second, one second. Hi. And while she's taking that call, Jante or Nicole or any of the cab members, uh, do, do you think it's it's um, uh, necessary to have a sense of some type of follow up for surveys or that may go in the content of a survey or or asking, you know, in reference to, you know, how these were addressed or, you know, what's the next steps or is it just ongoing or, you know, just something just to follow up to make sure that we're putting things back on the table. We're seeing it, we're seeing it stick sustainable or do we need to move on to a different question? Maybe we didn't ask the question uh, as if we need it to be addressed uh, and rephrase the question, uh, these type of things. I'm just thinking about the follow through. Uh, Survey for the cab or for the for the supervisors? Uh, not necessarily, it doesn't have to necessarily be a survey, but something just to have a sense of follow up, you know, um, a concrete sustainable follow up. Uh, that gives us something uh, for the whether it's the next year or during the course of the year to let us know that somebody's working on something. Right. To you sort know. of look at some of the outcomes, right? Yes. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. No, yeah, definitely agree with you on that. I think that I Patrice, you can confirm this, but I don't under I don't believe we have like a document that is tracking the outcomes. With the exception right. to fiscal, the re budget recommendations, and I think there's an opportunity there to start tracking what were the asks of this committee, and where does it landed? What is the progress to date? And I think that's that's a, something that we can help with. I think it's listed yeah. as some of the. Oh, go ahead, Patrice. Sorry. I was just going to say um, what has typically happened after um, meeting uh, after the ambassadors meeting. Excuse me. Um, Usually cab members come back to either general body or subcommittee meeting, usually general body, and they report out what was the outcome of those meetings. Um, in some cases, the leaders have requested more information, which information has been given to them, um, or they have stated, uh, again, they've given their feedback or their position on any of the um, uh, raised talking, talking points from, from there. So, and then after that, cab members sort of deliberate about what their next steps will be. So following your meetings, you'll probably have an opportunity or you will want an opportunity to discuss among yourselves and what your next steps will be to do that sort of follow up, right? It may very well be that the, the continuation of this work might just continue to stay at the CCP level, especially if you're meeting directly with department heads and alerting them to what your potential recommendations in the future will be. Um, and so then you're kind of getting ahead of the curve and you're already putting it on their radar that this is what you all want them to prioritize. And so when you have the opportunity to present to a full CCP body, then, you know, they will be ready for that or, or give, um, have more fruitful discussion and, and can take action on, on some of those things. So yeah, you, you, your, your follow-up will deter, will be based on what's the outcome of your meetings. Which is interesting on two parts, Patrice, <laughs> Patrice, because, you know, the outcomes of the meetings may not hit the actual barriers or the deliverables we're trying to make or see outcomes of. And it may just give us the gist of, how people responded in the meeting and what's the need from the meetings. You know, so just in two pronged states, you know, 
uh, that could be, you know, uh, contentious on, on one state and then looking at a continuation of these recommendations not meeting outcomes, you know, and that's a, and it's just ongoing, you know, for the next, you know, as we pass the baton, you know, so no, I, 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 to, I totally get it. You know, I just, I just look at it as, you know, the end result, you know, having the end result in mind first, you know, then you get to where you're trying to go through the process, you know, and it helps in the beginning to target things uh, moving forward. And I just, just make that statement in reference to follow up. I don't want to continue to be on the follow up piece, but I just want to just kind of share that, that effort there. Well, and this, this group is not doing a, a group of an, another round of policy and recommendations this year, right? Because the current ones that you're looking at right here, are still, some of them are in progress right now, um, which I, to my understanding is new. Um, I don't know how much historically we've, we haven't had a year where we haven't had brand new policy recommendations. Um, but yeah, this number four is, is specific to those recommendations. So we might have to have like a number five that speaks to something else that's brand new. Okay, so this might be something as far as going forward, we might want to put on the next uh, meetings agenda, just um, if it, uh, if we have the time to obviously go back up over it. Um, Are there any uh, other um, um, topic areas that you, you all want to raise up? Or I'll say this, any top topic areas that are not currently listed that you would like to raise up. Um, Your group I... is one of the fortunate ones because you're going to be able to look at this twice where some of the other groups are only going to have one round, one round of this. So we can look at it next time for you. Um, but it might be worth attending some of the other subcommittees next month that will be looking at this as well. With my understanding, so September 9th, we want to approve these and the general meetings so that you guys can go out in the month of September um, to your assignments. Excuse me a second. Um, you asked, did we want to include some other items? Um, I noticed that housing, at least I thought through various committees and discussions at the full cab board, that mental health was a major uh, portal, housing followed by employment. So we had those three portals. I noticed in here, we deal with housing did I miss by chance mental health or employment in our talking points? Or did, or is that something we'd want to discuss down the line? So it wasn't talk. included in previous, um, in the previous year. This is a prior year. Um, correct, set of correct. Yeah, yeah, so it wasn't included, no. That is correct. And um, that's why I was just asking the questions. And, and again, I understand I can bring these up at our subcommittee meeting, but you just raised the subject here again. Did you want to include some other things? Yeah, and, no, please. And, and then my thought was to at least have discussion on those points and then add Dr. Hernandez and Ozzy's. I think they had two points maybe that leads to, and I believe Patrice, you mentioned, or somebody did create a number five, maybe there's some way to integrate those uh, to maybe, what does it enhance our document? It's an excellent document here, but since we were discussing it, and I don't mean to rain on somebody's parade who's already put it together, but hey, 
we're talking, so I just thought I'd throw it out. That's all. And I'm done. <laughs> I'm on mute. Well, I guess the question I have is how much of this is going to be flushed out because the budget recommendations were very much flushed out for number four, but these new these new newer concepts or newer opportunities. Um, what is the expectation of flushing that out before they go out and finalizing talking points for anything new? Well, I think it just depends on what um, the members want to speak to around um, mental health employment and um, and housing. We have even with housing specifically, it's it's just it's it's just calling for more investments to expand housing resources. So if if that's something that you all wanted to include as well, expanding resources for mental health and, and employment. That's a possibility. I have a question on bullet point three. Is now a good time to ask that question? Sure. Um, it says support the implementation of a plan for the transportation of individuals. I think that there's plans that have been implemented. So I'm wondering if the language could be changed a little bit to perhaps say um, support and expand the plan for the transportation because I think it's important to highlight what has been implemented and I know the reentry success center had a plan in place and then COVID hit and I know that with the new SUD counselors um, in our detention system there is a plan to transport individuals directly to uh, programs upon release so I, I'm wondering if that could be just amended to um, to to more fully support and maybe speak to what what actually needs to happen at this point with that yeah. and, and Patrice you know better than I as to what's happening yeah I I can certainly if um, members of the body are um, are okay with that we're more than happy to amend that so that way it reflects what's currently taking place and then if you want to see um, more being done um, I can tell you that with the reentry success center, um, they were utilizing um, some local innovation dollars um, to cover the cost of ride share um, uh, rides from um, jail to um, to different points throughout the community, but more specifically to the success center. Um, and unfortunately, due to COVID, um, they weren't able to fund a lot of rides as much as they had hoped to. Um, so we're kicking that back off um, to see how much traction we can get around um, around the ride shares. Um, and then I wanna say the transportation from custody to treatment programs, again, that's another one that got disrupted due to, to COVID, if I'm not mistaken, or at least just got started, some, something around that effect. Um, so that hasn't, so we still haven't seen those things materialize, but that said, those are like really small pilots um, that do not meet the, the entire need of what we know um, is, is, is needed for transportation from custody to, to various programs. We're almost at time. Am I correct on that? Yeah, it's 12 o'clock. So I guess we just roll this one over. Well, I so I just wanted to summarize some of the next steps that was discussed. So inviting the CBOs to present the budget request would be for next meeting. Correct? Correct. And then final, finalizing the talking points or any input that you want to provide for the talking points. We'd continue that conversation next month. Right, concerning the uh, item, I think uh, one and three, correct? Um, Crawford's uh, thoughts and Jill thoughts, correct? One and three. Number four. 
the action points one and three i believe crawford brought up i didn't end mental health and education i mean employment into one and geo wanted to highlight as far as the reentry center and the sud programs as far as their implementation of transportation that they're already doing just to continue and expand right right so that will be the last do, two things that we would obviously feel that there's more that needs to be discussed as far as new new talking points that we i need. personally don't know i'm fine okay but no one, you know, I guess said that they were okay with what's here or gave their thoughts as far as Crawford and Jill, unless I was lost somewhere and they did. I think Michelle and Ozzy wanted to sort of add something that had to do with their presentation today. If I remember that early on in the conversation, maybe I'm. Maybe oh, I'm correct. Not. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry about that, Ozzy and Dr. Hernandez. Correct. We'll bring it back. Yeah. And Thank then, Michelle, I know that you had mentioned about the Compassion Prison Project for Restorative Justice. Would you want to bring that back to this group or the subcommittee for programs and services that's focusing on restorative justice? I don't know if she's still on. Maybe I don't think she's still on. No, she's, no, she's not. Yeah. I'll follow up with her offline. Thank you. So that's all that um, I had for next steps. So what we could do then is um, our office can uh, make edits to this and provide both um, um, a draft and track changes so you can see what the changes from last year's um, talking points and then a clean version as well um, based on the um, based on the recommendations that or the input that was shared today. And if you like Crawford for you guys as for your meeting, I can provide that same draft in you guys' agenda. And then you can share um, during OCEC if uh, uh, what, what took place during this conversation to help set the context for um, to gather more input from OCEC. Excellent. And I was just thinking I made some notes here. I'll maybe reach out to Ozzy, get some comments from her, Dr. Hernandez. And I'll just kind of put this together. Then I can send that to Nicole and say, here are the thoughts. Now you figure out where to put them. No, I'm just joking there. But, <laughs> well, but Nicole will be out. So send it to me. <laughs> OK. Well, then, Patrice, yeah. you figure well, out where they should <laughs> well, Crawford, just a, a reminder. So your next Tuesday meeting talking points is not a talking point <laughs> on the agenda. Oh, well. Um, hey, we'll figure it out. <laughs> but, yeah, so next month on the 17th for your meeting, August 17th. Okay. And maybe I can send something to Nakenya and just the two of us and just say, hey, maybe we need to figure out this. And so at least we can uh, start the process going without having an official meeting, et cetera. Yeah. I, on, I think Michael did have some suggestions on how we actually solicited talking points. Correct. Um, I just added it to the agendas just so that the full committee could participate in a conversation about it. But excellent. Um, excellent. And then as, as far as action requested from CAB, I put on here Ozzy's and Michelle, Dr. Hernandez's presentation. That was an action that they wanted to present to the full CAB. Um, but I'll, I'll follow up offline with them exactly how, if they want to just present the same presentation or something, a variation of it. Um, Uh, just real quick, I, I I know we're over time here. Um, did any did Dale did uh, anyone send Dale the information? I know he said he was interested in joining. I believe when we've done introductions. Um, so do we have something to call that we can send him if he doesn't know um, how to uh, uh, join CAP, or has that already been taken um, care of? Dale is on right now. Oh, he's on right. Okay. okay. He's here. May, may I comment? Dale is being considered. I've already looked at his application or at least a preliminary run through. So we'll be considering that at our next meeting. And um, so are, are, are you putting out the, the challenge that uh, if he's accepted, you want him on your committee? Uh, <laughs> no, I just I just heard him earlier and I got really excited. I know that we have some open uh, vacancies, so I didn't want to just leave that out. I didn't think we would okay. run over, but yeah. <laughs> you a handful, Crawford. I promise you, you are. <laughs> okay, I'm just taking the blame for somebody too. You know. <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder 
why I'm feeling like a tennis ball right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with that, we can adjourn uh, 1206, right? Yes. All right. Thank you, Nicole. You all have a wonderful weekend. All right, Crawford. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.